you're not already using AI tools to scale your Facebook ad account, then you're probably falling behind. In this video, I'm gonna go over the best AI tools that I'm currently using and show you how I'm using them in my accounts right now. We're gonna get to some really cool new features on how I'm using ChatGPT in a minute. But first, I wanna show you some really cool other tools that I've seen emerging in the industry. And I'm gonna include some real examples, so make sure you keep watching. First, we're gonna talk about Midjourney. Midjourney is a generative artificial intelligence program that can essentially make images out of thin air just by you giving it a prompt. It's very similar to other alternatives you may have heard of, such as Dolly and Stable Diffusion. I've seen lots of examples of Midjourney being used in the industry, but I wanna show you some examples of these concepts I made for a brand called Kuru Footwear. I wanted to see if I could take Midjourney and take a simple product, a white photograph, and turn it into something completely different. I started by going into Midjourney and prompting it to create some sort of a backdrop that I could use, and I prompted it to say, a shoe floating in a sky with clouds. It created an image that looked like this, and I kept asking it for more variations until I found something that I liked. I then took that image and took it into Photoshop, and I was able to take out this shoe that Midjourney created and replace it with my product photography. And it was really easy to key out the photo using Photoshop because it was a product, a white photo. Then I did some slight touch-ups to make it pop a little bit more, and I really liked how these came out. You definitely have to be creative with Midjourney, but there are some really cool examples that I've seen people do for their own brands. One of my good friends, Rich Musket, created the static image before and after ads for what seems like a coffee brand. You can see how he used Midjourney in a really creative way here by making these before and after ads that are very situational and make sense for his brand. I'm a big fan of these and I really wanna see how they do. Another example is a tweet I saw Nick Shackleford post on Twitter that was for a dog supplement brand. And I think this ad came out really well and it genuinely looks real, pretty scary. As I was editing this video, Photoshop just released a new beta version that uses generative AI mixed with Photoshop. I was playing around with it and the results are pretty incredible. So looking at my original photo that I had created, this was mixing mid-journey with Photoshop and something that I already did, but I wanted to see how good Photoshop was at just taking the simple product on white photo and then automatically generating something behind it. The way that you do this is going up to the selection tool right here and you click that and then all you need to do is make sure you have the layer covered and you can automatically select either on the image or behind it. A good way to do is to select the actual image. It's going to automatically um, mask that and then you can do generative fill, which is going to change whatever is within the confines of that selection or you can invert that selection and we're going to then change the background. You notice that it has the entire border selected now and then you can click generative fill and then we can say something like pink neon lights shooting out in the background of the shoe. So let's see what that looks like. And that's pretty cool. And the best part is that it makes multiple variations and you can also automatically generate something different. And honestly, I really like how this one looks. So I wanna show you some versions that I've already created using Photoshop, check these out. This one is honestly one of my favorites. It just did a really good job. And much like Mid Journey, this takes a lot of playing around with and prompting and figuring out what prompts work the best. The prompt that I used was sunbeams shooting out of the shoe for summer themed ad. And it worked pretty well. You know, you could really just take this image and you can instantly have a DCT or six new ads ready to go within minutes, which is incredible. Here are some other variations. As I'm just looking through these, look how many variations there are and look how cool some of them are. I think this one looks really clean as well. I also generated some clouds behind it. So similar to the original photo that I had, while these tools are incredible, I still think that the one that I made in Mid Journey looks more professional and polished off. But I think if I tweaked them a little bit more, I could make them look more like this. But I still think that the generative AI in Photoshop needs a little bit of work. And I think it's worth playing around with, especially if you have the Creative Cloud Suite, you'll already have access to this. So definitely download the beta version. And I'm gonna be honest, this one is really freaky. The next AI tool we're gonna be going over is called Eleven Labs, and it is a AI voice generating software. As we know, there's already been a large trend of the TikTok voice generated sound that's being used on ad. TikTok, make me buy it. I'm gonna show you two ad examples I've seen of people using Eleven Labs. This game is made for grandparents. Meet We See, the game of connection. It's made for all ages, from 4 to 104. I'm not going to show you the entire app, but that did a pretty impressive job. Not only can you create AI generated voices, but you can do it for a specific target audience. And in this case, it really sounds like an older woman. Here's another voice example from The Daily Good. There is no reason why someone should start their day off with a bunch of negative news. 
The Daily Good News Letter is the one thing that will start your day in a calmer and more mindful way. Of course, there's going to be an ethical debate about this type of advertising, but nonetheless, it's an impressive thing that you can test out if you want. But I can definitely see this being a large conversation by the FTC in the next few years, if not sooner than that. Eleven Labs is undeniably going to be used by tons of different advertisers, and it's going to save people a lot of money from having to outsource UGC. All right, let's move on to the next tool, which is going to be specifically ChatGPT4. ChatGPT4 this week just rolled out web browsing features and new plugins that will extend the power of ChatGPT. You can just simply ask it a question and it will actually surf the web, click into a website and be able to analyze that entire website for information and then come back to you with a specific response. Web browsing is so new but I think that there's a potential for product research, competitive research and general advertising and mass desire research here that is going to be really useful. I've also identified several plugins for you that you've got to download if you have ChatGPT4. The first one is the link reader plugin. A link reader plugin will read content from all kinds of different links, such as web pages, PDFs, PowerPoints, images, Word documents, and even more. All you have to do is provide it the URL and prompt it to give you the information you're looking for. I can see this being great for competitive research and also for analysis of new clients products. There's also another plugin called chat with PDF and it does a very similar thing. To use chat with PDF, I'm pretty sure you have to upload it to a Google Drive document and then provide it with that shareable link. A great way to use this plugin is to upload a large list of your customer reviews and then ask ChatGPT to provide you specific prompts about your customers. Or you can use the website writer.kendall.ai where all you need to do is upload a CSV file of your customer reviews and you can get instant rich insights from a large prompt that it already has preloaded into the website. Unfortunately, the link reader plugin and the data scraping tools from ChatGPT's plugins won't actually let you just scrape the product reviews off of the website. I'm not really sure why it doesn't work, but I haven't had any success there yet. But the best way you can do this is just to have a Shopify plugin. Before these plugins, I would manually copy and paste the web pages into ChatGPT and then ask it prompts about my customer reviews, and that would work pretty well too. So if you don't have ChatGPT+, Plus, you actually can just do that with ChatGPT 3.5, and that should work just fine. Another great tool is called Website Performance Plugin, and it will automatically analyze your website site speed and provide performance recommendations that will help performance of your website. An actionable way that you can use this tool is by asking ChatGPT to take the performance review it gives you and then make it into an email to your client. And within less than a minute, you have rich, actionable insights to send off to your client. All right, this last plugin is a huge one and it's Zapier's AI extension. I'm reading here that Zapier's ChatGPT plugin is a collab between OpenAI and Zapier, which lets you connect over 5,000 plus apps like Google Sheets, Gmail, and Slack and interact with them directly inside of ChatGPT. For example, you get a new inbound lead, ChatGPT can automatically pull that email, analyze it, and give you a proper response that you can automatically send out to that lead. Some popular use cases are writing and sending Slack messages, and there are Zapier connections for Facebook ads, so I'm imagining a future where we can automate reporting through ChatGPT, where we can have specific KPIs laid out in a ChatGPT prompt, and we can say, hey, ChatGPT, please pull week over week and month to date reporting across these KPIs and automate automate in a message to my clients in Slack with those specific reports. Now, the last thing I'll say about ChatGPT is that you don't need all these fancy new plugins and web browsing features to be able to get really, really powerful responses out of the AI. Don't forget that just making really strong prompts can give you amazing outputs. This can massively increase the speed at which you identify your customer personas and the mass desires that you can speak to your customers with in ads. For example, I have a Notion board that I built for myself that I can use for advertising research with ChatGPT. And all I do is copy and paste my client's name and product and some form of a description and potentially customer reviews into the document. And it will give me a full on customer persona analysis. Analysis includes demographic information, psychographic information, mass desires, pain points, benefits, and so much more. The best way that you can use ChatGPT is to help it understand exactly who it is and what it's doing for a specific task. For example, you may want to tell ChatGPT, act as an advanced marketer and copywriter and say, why would someone want to alleviate or achieve a specific problem or desire and reference breakthrough advertising when crafting your response? And as you continue to ask ChatGPT more questions, it's going to get increasingly better at learning what it's trying to do, and the output is going to improve due to machine learning 
that's going on within that ChatGPT session. I've had ChatGPT write me advertising copy, headlines, idea generate for new ads. I've even had it write me entire UGC scripts that I can use straight off the bat and send to creators. And there are so many more examples. For whatever reason you ever get really bad audio delivered from a UGC creator, you can use this app to automatically clean up your audio and make it sound really crisp just like a podcast. In fact, I've actually been using this plugin on this video the entire time and the audio is coming straight off of my camera. This is what it actually sounds like versus using Adobe Podcast Audio, which sounds like this, which is a lot better. Now, before I wrap up the video, I wanna talk about something really cool that Facebook just announced called AI Sandbox. Meta advertising is delving into the world of AI generative tools and this is going to be revolutionary for the next few years of Facebook ads. Some key features like including the ability to generate text variations for ad copy, which is something that already exists, but also creating background images from text inputs and also automatically adjusting images to fit across Meta's different ad platforms. This is gonna save advertisers a ton of time, likely gonna improve performance because it's gonna give the AI more to work with. And it's also going to be similar to standard enhancements, which is something that already exists, where Facebook will make variations of your ad, take your copywriting, it'll mix it up and put it in different parts of your ad, potentially replacing the primary text with your headline. And I can't lie, this is something I've been against in the past because it definitely relinquishes a lot of control of what your ad visually is going to look like, but it also sounds like something that Facebook is pushing very hard right now, which means it's something you should test out and see if it will actually help improve your performance. Just like I used Midjourney to generate that cloud background on the Kuru footwear ad, I think that in the future, we're going to be able to have DAVAs that are automatically generated carousels with different images and backgrounds for all of your different products. And it's going to be done without you having to do anything. And that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. And I hope that you got some valuable insights about what AI tools you should be using Using to scale your Facebook ads. Don't forget to like, leave a comment with any questions that you have, and we'll be sure to answer. And don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next video. Peace, y'all.